Hello everyone, welcome back to video 5 in the Laser Defender series. We're going to get started adding a collectible health pack that your player ship will be able to pick up and use it to regain health. I'm not sure if this video will be uh, too long, so it might have to be split into two videos, but I'm going to try to aim to put it all in one video. We'll see how that goes. So, to get started, Let's drag in some assets that we can use for our health pack types. And before I do that, I'm going to go here to the Entities folder and create a subfolder inside of it called Power Ups. And this is where I'm going to drag the Power Ups. Now I've chosen. You're going to need at least three types. I've chosen from the same space pack these green pills. And at the same time, I'm just going to drag in this bolt, which we're going to use in a laser video. But I'm just going to put it in there now. And once those are in, I already know from experience that these are going to show up too small if we drag them into the scene. In fact, you can really not even see that there. There it is. So uh, what I'm going to do right away is change these pixels per unit for all of these to 50. And I'm also going to change the format to uh, true color and just apply those changes. And I'm going to do that for all the items here. So you can go ahead and do that too. The format has to do with how big the sprites are, but it can also just affect the overall quality. I know in the Glitch Garden segment of the course, you're going to go into a lot more detail on what that exactly entails, but just for now, you can go ahead and change that to true color and leave the max size as 1024. Actually, you can also get rid of this generate mit maps. We don't need that on any of them either. Almost done. And Okay, so first things first, decide which color pill you want to restore the most health to the least health. In my case, I'm going to say the green is the lowest health, blue is medium health, and red is the most health. So whichever is the lowest health color you want, drag that into your scene somewhere above the player. So in this case, I'm going to go to the green pill, and I'm just going to rename it Health Pack, and I'm going to add some components onto it. So first, I'm going to add, um, I see I already had here a health pack script. So I'm going to put a health pack script on here. I'm going to need to put, actually I'm going to do it this order, a box collider 2D. And in this case, that will be a trigger because we don't want it to uh, bounce off our ship. We want it to just interact with it. And I'm also going to put a rigid body 2D component, which is not going to be kinematic because we do want it to be obey physics. And just to test it out, we can press play and see that it drops. It drops a little too fast, actually. So we're going to half that gravity scale to 0.5, drag that up a little bit more, just, just to make it so it seems like it's going to fall fast, but you should still have a chance to catch it. Half 0.5 seems to work okay for that. You can fiddle around with those numbers to your heart's content. And I'm just going to move the script component down to the bottom because I like the script components to be down at the bottom. And last thing, not thing, last thing first, last thing last, I'm just going to turn that health pack into a prefab. Okay, now let's think about what we are going to edit, what scripts we're going to edit to make this actually work, and what uh, script is going to do what. So let's get started with this health pack script. And right away, I can tell you, we're not going to make any use of this update function. So we can just rename this to, uh, not trigger, void on trigger enter 2D. Because we know that we're going to have this uh, health pack interact with our player ship. And this is going to take a collider 2D, and I'm just going to call that trigger. So as soon as it interacts with our player ship, this is go something's going to happen. Uh, and I only want the health pack to interact with our player ship. I don't, for instance, if we just left it like this, what would happen is if you missed it, the health pack would fall down and it would interact with the shredder objects, uh, the bottom shredder, and then you, your player would get health pack back even though it's interacting with the shredder, which isn't what we want. So there's a simple way we can take care of this. Uh, we can use tags, but in this case, we're going to go here and type an if statement that says if trigger dot game object dot get component and then we're going to say uh, player controller 
then, and I'm going to need one more bracket here, I just realized, the closing bracket, and for now I'm just going to say print collided with player, close, close in quotation marks, and then we can just also say destroy game object. And now let's just test this out just to make sure it's working. I'll open up the console here, hit play, and great, we can see it says here collided with player, and we can see in this scene that it disappeared. So we know that's working, and uh, just to double check, if we move out of the way, uh, you don't get that console message, but we know that it destroyed it got destroyed from the shredder and it didn't interact. So that's perfect. That means we can essentially have the health pack only interact with our player ship and uh, give back health only if the player hits it. Cool. So now we're going to need to add some variables in here uh, that are going to control what this health pack is going to do. So number one, we're going to need a sprite array. So I'm going to put a public sprite and I'm just going to call this health pack type. And we're also going to need a chance, a percentage chance for these health packs to drop. So I'm going to put down here public int percent chance blue and percent chance red. And actually, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to put, uh, they're not going to be integers, they're going to be floats, excuse me. And because we don't want these, the, the game designer, in this case it's you, but you know, in case it's someone else, we don't want them to be able to put just any number. So I'm going to put a range in here, which is going to restrict this float to uh, appear only between a certain range. And in this case, that range is going to be 0.01. And one. And now I'm going to put a third variable, which is going to be. Actually, you know what? No, we are we are going to do it. Uh, these are going to be whole numbers. I changed my mind. And this is not going to be floats. I'm just going to leave these as integers. But the next one, I'm going to put another variable, and this time we are going to use floats. And this is where I'm going to put 0.01f to 1 within the range. And this time, we're going to put in public float green recovery percentage. Same thing for blue. Blue recovery percentage and red recovery percentage. Okay, now if we save all of those and go back to the inspector view, we can see that over here under the script for the health pack, we have a whole bunch of different sliders appearing. And we can set these to uh, be different amounts based on what percentages we want to interact or what we want to be in the scene. So these top two sliders are going to control what percentage chance there is that we're going to get a blue health pack or a red health pack. And the reason I didn't put green is because if it's not blue or red, it's going to be green by default. So we, re we really only need to add percent chances for it to be appear as these colors. And I'm just going to say that there's a 25% chance it's going to be blue. Or no, I, that's the wrong order because I want blue to be more common. So a 50% chance it's going to be blue, 25% chance it's going to be red. And then how much health are these health packs actually going to recover? Well, I'm going to say green is going to be a 15% recovery, blue is going to be a 20%, and red is going to be a 25%. Again, these numbers are totally subjective, and you can change them around as you want. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. And also for the health pack type, we're going to need uh, to change that into an array. I should be working on the prefab. I'm working here on the health pack in the game scene. And this is where we are going to drag our different colored sprites on here. So element zero is going to be my blue health pack, and element one is going to be my red health pack. And just if you are working on the health pack in the scene like I am, just make sure you apply any changes you make. Okay, now let's go back to the script and think about how we're going to get this to 
uh, randomize into a different health pack color. So I'm going to write a hopeful method name in here, and I'm just going to call this randomize health pack type. And this is going to call a new method that we're going to create called void randomize health pack type. And this method here is going to determine what color the health pack is going to be and how much health it's, only, it's actually going to make you get back. And I'm going to put in a little bit of a challenge here for you, and I'm going to encourage you to come up with your own uh, your own randomization method for this randomized health pack type method. So go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can get it to randomize within those percentages that it's going to appear as blue or red. And here are some hints for you. Uh, pause the video and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. How do you do? If you were able to do it, fantastic. And if not, well, just keep an eye out here and uh, let me show you my solution to doing this. And this is my solution. Uh, it's by no means the only solution, but it's the solution I'm going to use. So within this randomized health pack type, I'm gonna create a new variable and call it int roll. And I'm just gonna make that random dot range between one and 100. And remember in Unity, if we want between one and 100, we actually have to write one and 101. That's just because Unity is weird like that and starts counting from zero. Okay, now I'm gonna write an if statement that says if roll is less than or equal to percent chance red, In this case here, I'm going to have to call the sprite renderer. So I'm going to say game object dot get component sprite renderer dot sprite equals health pack type. And I believe uh, my red health pack was number one. Let me just check. Yep, red is element one in the sprite array. And then I'm going to need another variable up here. So I'm going to call this private float recovery percentage and we'll use this in a little bit but for now I'm just going to say recovery percentage equals red recovery percentage okay and one more thing I'm going to now say return which will essentially exit the method at this point because we know a red health pack is the best health pack type, and if it's randomized the chance and gotten us a red health pack, we don't want to get a blue health pack or a green health pack. We can just leave at that point. So I'm going to copy this if statement now and do the same thing here, except I'm going to put blue and change this from a 1 to a 0 and change this word from red to blue. Blue recovery percentage. Okay, and outside of both of these if statements, now I'm just going to write recovery percentage equals green recovery percentage. And the only way it's going to get to, I should be having this larger for you, the only way it's going to get to this final line of code is if it fails to uh, roll for a red or if it fails to roll for a blue, only because it's not gonna hit the returns in that case, only then is it by default going to become a green health pack. So now we can just go ahead and play, and hopefully I did everything right and didn't get any errors. Play. Oh, we got a red. We got a green. We got a blue. Oh, so perfect. We know we're, good. we're randomizing. I should get green and blue more often. Uh, just have to test it a few times, and it seems to be working pretty well, so that's good. Okay, so that's, we're almost done here with the health pack script at this point. Uh, now, now that we have our health pack type, uh, let's actually uh, do something more than just print collided with player when the health pack collides with our player. Let's actually do something. Let's recover some health. So in this case here, we're going to have to get a reference to our player controller script. So I'm going to write private player controller play our controller and we're going to call this here in our start method 
So if you remember how to do this yourself, uh, please go ahead and write the rest of the statement. But player controller equals game object dot find object of type player controller add method. Now we can say over here in this uh, void on enter 2D, we can say player controller dot dot what? Well, we haven't written the other method yet. So we need to go at this point. I'll finish writing it here. I'm, I'm going to call, I'm going to make another method in our player controller script. And I'm going to call it recover health. And we're going to pass through this recovery percentage uh, variable that we created, which is now equal to the amount of health that we're going to recover. So this is uh, giving an error right now because I haven't actually created this. So let's go over here to the player controller script and write a new method. So I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and write public void recover health. And now that I've saved that, that should work in this other script. And we're going to, uh, oh, it's not going to be empty. It is going to take in an argument. So we're going to write float percent to recover. If you have any questions about the passing variable stuff, please let me know. Going to declare a new float here and going to call it float health recovery is equal to percent to recover times equals your current health. Uh, now that should almost work. We just need to actually give restore our health. So we're going to say health plus equals health. Recovery, health recovery, and we can just print player has plus health just to test it out and see if it's working. So let's go ahead here and keep an eye on the console and see if that works. Player has 345. So what if you recall the player act here actually only starts with 300 health. So it's almost working, but it's actually giving more health than the player is allowed to have right now. Uh, but you can see that it is restoring the right numbers. 70, uh, that was a red, and it gave me 75 extra health. 25% uh, of 300, I believe, is 75. You can go ahead and check that if you don't believe me. So this is, this is easy enough to fix. We can just use an if statement here, and we can say if health is greater than or equal to max health, which is it sh is, appearing, is appearing in red because we haven't actually declared that variable yet. But again, I'll go back and do that in a second. We're just going to say health equals max health. And that is almost there. We just need to go up and actually declare this max health variable. So we're going to write private float max health and here in the start method uh, we're going to write max health equals health and we're just setting the health back to equal itself here so let's go ahead test it one more time uh, did I delete the print statement Oh, I delete. I probably deleted the print statement. That's why it's not working, right? Right? Let's write print health. Try it one more time. There we go. Three hundred. So we know we're not going above the maximum health. So that's we're get, oh, getting there. Uh, actually, it, it works already. There's only two more things left to do. Uh, but let's see how we're doing on time. 1921. Okay, so I am going to split this into a second video. It's getting too long here. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.